Lord Ashton's frantic entrance into 221B Baker Street sent shockwaves through the usually tranquil atmosphere. Holmes, reclined in his armchair, his fingers steepled in thought, regarded the disheveled nobleman with keen interest. Mr. Holmes, Lord Ashton gasped, his breath ragged from haste, the thorn falconet. Gone. Stolen from its case at the British Museum. Holmes straightened, his piercing gaze fixed on Lord Ashton. Indeed, Lord Ashton, do sit down and compose yourself. You have my full attention. Pray, tell me everything. Lord Ashton collapsed into a nearby chair, his normally ruddy complexion drained of color. It happened this morning, he began, his voice trembling. I received an urgent summons from the museum's curator. Upon arrival, I found the Thorn Falconet's display case empty, its golden pedestal bare. The security guards were in disarray, unable to explain how such a theft could occur under their watch. Holmes listened intently, his mind already racing through possibilities. And what of the investigation thus far? Any clues? Any witnesses? Lord Ashton shook his head despondently. None, Mr. Holmes. The museum security footage reveals nothing but a blank screen during the time of the theft. It's as if the falconet vanished into thin air. Holmes rose from his chair, his eyes alight with curiosity. Fear not, Lord Ashton. I shall take up this case with utmost urgency. However, I require unfettered access to the crime scene and any evidence the museum can provide. Lord Ashton nodded eagerly. Anything you require, Mr. Holmes. The Thorn Falconet is a national treasure, and its recovery is of paramount importance. With a brisk nod, Holmes motioned for Watson to fetch his coat and hat. Come, Watson. The game is afoot. We must make haste to the British Museum. Arriving at the museum, Holmes wasted no time in scrutinizing the scene of the crime. The display case, once home to the majestic Thorn Falconet, stood empty, a stark reminder of the audacity of the theft. Holmes knelt beside it, examining every inch with meticulous precision. Suddenly, he froze, his keen eyes fixated on a minute detail. What is it, Holmes? Watson inquired, peering over his shoulder. Holmes pointed to a faint residue on the glass, barely perceptible to the naked eye. Pipe tobacco, he declared with certainty. A clue, Watson, albeit a subtle one. It seems our thief left behind a trace of his presence. Watson marveled at Holmes's deductive prowess. But what does it signify, Holmes? Holmes rose to his full height, a gleam of excitement in his eyes. It signifies, my dear Watson, that our investigation has only just begun. With that, he strode purposefully out of the museum, leaving behind a puzzled curator and a tantalizing mystery waiting to be unraveled. With the tantalizing clue of the pipe tobacco in hand, Holmes embarked on a journey into the underbelly of London's antique collecting world. Disguised as a wealthy enthusiast with a penchant for rare artifacts, he ventured into smoky backstreet parlors and dimly lit dens, where the air was thick with the scent of age and intrigue. Accompanied by Watson, who played the role of his affluent companion, Holmes made his way through the labyrinthine streets of London, seeking out those who dwelled in the shadows, their obsessions hidden from the prying eyes of society. Their first stop was a small, cramped parlor nestled in the heart of Soho, where a nervous coin hoarder by the name of Percival greeted them with a wary glance. Percival's collection of ancient coins, meticulously arranged in glass cases, spoke of a lifetime spent in pursuit of rare and elusive treasures. Holmes, with his customary charm and wit, engaged Percival in conversation, subtly probing for any knowledge of the Thorn Falconet. The coin hoarder's hands shook as he stammered out denials, but his eyes betrayed a flicker of fear, a hint of something hidden beneath the surface. Undeterred, Holmes pressed on, his next destination taking him to a dimly lit tavern in Whitechapel where a boastful collector of dubious Egyptian relics held court. Swathed in shadows, the collector regaled his audience with tales of ancient curses and buried tombs, his eyes gleaming with a fervor bordering on madness. Once again, Holmes assumed the role of the eager enthusiast, his keen intellect masked behind a facade of curiosity. As he questioned the collector about the falconet, a nervous tension hung in the air, the man's bravado crumbling in the face of Holmes's relentless inquiry. Their final stop led them to a secluded mansion on the outskirts of London, where a formidable woman with a passion for medieval manuscripts held court. Dressed in black velvet and adorned with jewels, she exuded an air of authority that brooked no dissent. Holmes, undeterred by her imposing presence, engaged her in conversation, his keen mind sifting through her words for any hint of deception. Though she feigned ignorance of the falconet's whereabouts, Holmes detected a subtle tremor in her voice, a telltale sign of guilt lurking beneath her composed exterior. As they made their way back to Baker Street, Holmes pondered the clues they had gathered, his mind racing with possibilities. 
The game is afoot, Watson, he declared, his eyes alight with excitement. We have but scratched the surface of this most curious mystery, but mark my words, the truth will out, and justice shall prevail. And with that, he disappeared into the depths of his study, leaving Watson to marvel at the brilliance of the man known as Sherlock Holmes. As Holmes delved deeper into the enigmatic world of antique collectors, he realized that the answers he sought might lie beyond the confines of conventional investigation. Turning to the realm of the digital underworld, he embarked on a daring foray into the dark web, where secrets lurked in the shadows and anonymity was the currency of choice. With Watson at his side, his trusted ally in this unfamiliar terrain, Holmes navigated the labyrinth and corridors of the dark web with ease, his keen intellect and sharp instincts guiding their path. They encountered a myriad of pseudonymous users, each shrouded in mystery and intrigue, their identities concealed behind layers of encryption and obfuscation. Their journey led them to a hidden forum, where collectors with usernames like Obsessive Owl and Jade Jaguar congregated to discuss their illicit passions. Here, amidst the digital ether, Holmes found a wealth of information waiting to be unearthed, a treasure trove of clues and leads that promised to unravel the mystery of the Thorn Falconet. With Watson's assistance, Holmes penetrated the forum's defenses, his encryption cracking skills allowing them to gain access to the inner sanctum of the dark web. Here, shrouded in anonymity, they discovered a clandestine network of collectors, their conversations laced with excitement and anticipation as they awaited the arrival of the coveted falconet. An anonymous seller, known only as the Raven, emerged as a central figure in their investigation, boasting of an upcoming auction for the figurine that had captivated the imaginations of collectors around the world. Holmes, his interest piqued by this revelation, resolved to infiltrate the auction and uncover the truth behind the theft of the Thorn Falconet. With meticulous planning and careful preparation, Holmes and Watson embarked on their next mission, their sights set on the elusive figure known as the Raven. Armed with their knowledge of the dark web and a steely determination to see justice done, they prepared to confront the shadows that lurked within the digital realm, knowing that the answers they sought lay just beyond their reach. With the revelation of the Raven and the impending auction on the dark web, Holmes knew that the time for action had come. Gathering his resources and allies, he embarked on a daring plan to outwit the elusive seller and recover the Thorn Falconet. Utilizing his network of contacts, Holmes enlisted the help of a reformed art forger with an impeccable eye for detail. Together, they painstakingly recreated a flawless replica of the falconet, every curve and contour meticulously crafted to match the original masterpiece. Armed with their counterfeit creation, Holmes and Watson ventured once more into the shadows of the digital underworld, their goal clear, to infiltrate the auction and expose the raven for the criminal mastermind he truly was. As the auction drew near, tension hung in the air like a thick fog, anticipation crackling with every keystroke as collectors from around the globe eagerly awaited their chance to acquire the prized artifact. Among them, hidden in the virtual crowd, lurked Holmes and Watson, their identities concealed behind a veil of anonymity. As the raven unveiled the falconet to the eager bidders, Holmes watched with bated breath, his pulse quickening with each passing moment. The replica, indistinguishable from the original, gleamed in the virtual spotlight, a testament to the skill of its creators and the lengths to which they had gone to deceive their quarry. As the bidding war escalated, Holmes seized the opportunity to make his move. Contacting the Raven through a secure channel, he posed as a wealthy collector, his voice a honeyed lore designed to entice the seller into revealing his true intentions. With a combination of charm and guile, Holmes manipulated the proceedings, driving up the price of the falconet until it reached a staggering sum. As the auction drew to a close, he made his final move, offering an exorbitant bid that left his competitors reeling. In the ensuing chaos, Holmes sprang into action, alerting the authorities and revealing the true nature of the auction to the stunned onlookers. Panic rippled through the crowd as the raven attempted to flee, his identity unmasked and his carefully laid plans in ruins. In the end, justice prevailed, and the thorn falconet was returned to its rightful place in the British Museum. As Holmes stood amidst the wreckage of the raven's empire, a sense of satisfaction washed over him, knowing that his efforts had not been in vain. With a nod to Watson, his ever-faithful companion, Holmes turned his gaze to the horizon, his mind already searching for the next mystery to unravel. For in the world of Sherlock Holmes, the game never truly ended, it simply evolved, each challenge more daunting than the last. The night of reckoning had arrived. Holmes and Watson stood amidst the opulent surroundings of the auction house, their eyes scanning the crowd for any sign of the raven or his cohorts. Tension hung in the air like a heavy shroud, anticipation coiling in the pit of their stomachs as they awaited the final act in this gripping drama. As the auctioneer prepared to unveil the falconet, Holmes tensed, his senses on high alert. The moment of truth was at hand, and he knew that the fate of the thorn falconet hung in the balance. 
With a flourish, the curtains parted, revealing the gleaming figure of the falconet perched upon its pedestal. Gasps of awe rippled through the crowd as its beauty was revealed, its golden form casting a mesmerizing spell over all who beheld it. But as the bidding began in earnest, a sudden darkness descended upon the room, plunging it into chaos. Panic erupted as the lights flickered and died, leaving the guests disoriented and vulnerable in the inky blackness. In the midst of the confusion, a struggle ensued, the sounds of shouts and scuffles echoing through the darkness. Holmes moved with purpose, his keen instincts guiding him through the chaos as he sought out the source of the disturbance. And then, as suddenly as it had begun, the darkness lifted, revealing a scene of pandemonium. The raven was nowhere to be found, his identity still shrouded in mystery, but in his place stood a disheveled figure, clutching the thorn falconet in trembling hands. It was Lord Ashton. The nobleman, driven to madness by his insatiable greed, had orchestrated the theft of the falconet in a desperate bid to satisfy his lust for wealth and power. He had planted the pipe tobacco clue to throw suspicion off himself, using his position and influence to manipulate the investigation from the shadows. But in the end, his carefully laid plans had unraveled, undone by the keen intellect and unwavering determination of Sherlock Holmes. As the authorities moved in to apprehend Lord Ashton, Holmes turned his attention to the falconet, its golden form gleaming in the dim light of the room. With a sense of reverence, he carefully lifted it from Lord Ashton's grasp, his fingers tracing the intricate contours of its surface. The thorn falconet, he murmured, his voice tinged with admiration. A masterpiece of craftsmanship, now restored to its rightful place. And with that, he handed the falconet over to the awaiting authorities, knowing that it would soon be returned to the British Museum, where it belonged. As dawn broke over the city, casting its golden light upon the streets below, Holmes and Watson stood side by side, their mission accomplished and justice served. For in the world of Sherlock Holmes, no mystery was too great, no challenge too daunting, as long as the truth remained within reach. And as they made their way back to Baker Street, their minds already turning to the next adventure that awaited them, they knew that they would face it together, as friends and partners in the pursuit of justice.